Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, Senior Currency Strategist with DailyFX. Today is Tuesday, March 28th, 2017. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. And today we're going to get an interesting look at U.S. economic activity right now, seeing as how there's a pretty big divergence occurring between hard data and soft data. What do we mean by this? Hard data would be figures like advanced retail sales, trade balance, CPI, uh, housing data, where soft data would be those sentiment figures like the ISM services or like U.S. consumer confidence. In fact, today when we take a look at the economic calendar, we do have the advanced goods trade balance due out at 8.30 Eastern, and then at 10 o'clock Eastern, we have that U.S. consumer confidence reading. And we're looking at the divergence between the two because since the U.S. presidential election, and especially in recent weeks, we've seen that this hard economic data, things that actually underpin the economic activity that goes into the Bureau of Economic Analysis GDP reading, those have tended to be a little bit weaker. That's why when you look at the, say, Atlanta Fed GDP now estimate, you can see that we're only expecting a 1% rate of growth for the first quarter. On the other hand, when you look at something like that consumer confidence reading, it's coming off of almost a decade high. And in turn, other indicators that track GDP, such as the New York Fed, is saying that data is pointing to about a 3% growth rate in the first quarter. That's a pretty big divergence that we want to pay attention to. In fact, it underlies this fact that people have been feeling good, but they haven't been acting good, so to speak, with respect to the economy. I think right now you can put more stock in that hard data. And so looking for a first quarter GDP reading closer to that 1% level seems more accurate. I know that the Trump trade, if you will, the reflation trade where the dollar has rallied, U.S. yields have gone up, and the U.S. Uh, major stocks indices have run higher, has been predicated around this belief that we're going to see gridlock end in Washington, and we're going to see the regulatory environment clear up, and we're going to see tax reform and infrastructure spending. But after the debacle that was last week's Trump Care or AHCA plan, one has to consider the fact that the other legislation that the Trump administration wants to put forward is probably going to be a little bit more ideological challenging. For example, infrastructure spending would take a bipartisan group of representatives and senators to pass, given that so many in the Republican caucus right now aren't for government stimulus. And, and as you think about it, then, there's probably a little bit of a dissonance between that hard data and soft data. So today we're going to watch to see if some of those disappointments start to appear in the soft data, like that consumer confidence for March. If something like that falls back, that's where the dollar could really be hit again. And in turn, that's where something like U.S. stock market could be hit again in today's session. When you look at the S&P 500, it ended up closing out yesterday on a little bit of a stronger note after selling off to start the day. However, the key thing that we're looking forward to is to see whether or not something like the S&P 500 can retake that daily 34 EMA. Why? Well, once you get to the day before election day, uh, or before we found out the results of the election day, November 8th, um, we put a closing above said level for the first time uh, going back to about October 10th. That's not what really we care about, though. Since then, starting on November 8th, you go all the way until March 21st when price had not closed below that daily 34 EMA. So that was surely the sign of the strong trend. Now we're starting to see these momentum indicators pull back not only to neutral territory, but start to slip into bearish territory. Stochastics is moving below 50 and MACD is starting to move below that signal line. Failure here today showing that dissonance closing, the gap closing between the hard data and soft data down to the bottom side. That would ultimately reveal that maybe People have gotten overexcited about the prospects uh, for changes in fiscal planning going forward out of the United States. Of course, this is all starting to hit on the dollar since the Fed made clear on March 15th that they had not yet incorporated estimates for fiscal stimulus into their summary of economic projections. It's been clear that the market has doubted the dollar's ability to stay up if the Fed is not going to move along an accelerated rate hike timeline. The fact of the matter is right now, the Fed is looking to infrastructure spending and tax reform as a wave of deficit spending, which if it all goes well, should lead to higher inflationary pressures. More inflationary pressures, you get a Fed that needs to tighten rates faster, more than what's currently priced in. But alas, that's not where we are anymore. Instead, market attention is starting to shift to some of the disappointing aspects of policy of the United States, and also starting to look at this debt ceiling deal, which is now seeing that the U.S. Treasury has extended funding to about the third week or fourth week of April there. 
And if there is no deal, of course, that leaves open the daunting prospect that the U.S. could default on its debt. Now, I know that uh, Republicans are in control now, so for them to hold their own president hostage over the debt ceiling like they did with uh, President Barack Obama so many times uh, in the last few years, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense politically, but it's not something we can dismiss outright, especially after what we saw this past Friday. Even so, one of my big concerns for the dollar in the later half of this year especially is whether or not the U.S. could get downgraded. If you recall back to August 2011, I know that seems like a long time ago, but in August 2011 when the U.S. lost its AAA rating from Standard & Poor's, Fitch and Moody's both wrote interesting notes basically pointing to the fact that the U.S. economy needed to get onto a sustainable basis. Certainly gutting the tax base and ramping up spending is no way to keep your debt on a sustainable basis. So as it were, I think the U.S. dollar has some troubles ahead of it. Right now, when I look at something like the euro as it's kind of coming into some resistance, going back to the highs we had starting in May 2016 and again off the August, September 2016 highs here, we are sort of at a little bit of resistance also incorporating the former support turn resistance in this 108 to about 108.50 area. So, you know, your dollar could break out higher here. This could all really amount to a false break low, and I certainly think that given some of the political risk that's enveloping the euro right now, uh, talking about the French elections, the German elections, and even possibly the Italian elections at the end of the year, there is something to be diffused right now. And as it were, we're looking at a, a set of polls today that shows that Macron is still ahead of Marine Le Pen in France uh, by about 22 points or 24 points, depending upon how you look at it. That ultimately should mean that when these elections come down the pipe on April 23rd, we'll probably see a split in the first round, but in the second round, Macron goes on to become the president of France. That should remove some political risk from the euro side of things, which in turn should help uh, not only Euro dollar rally, but pairs like Euro CAD and, and Euro Aussie continue to rally. I really like expressing the Euro via Euro CAD and Euro Aussie right now because this idea of fiscal stimulus not coming into play out of the world's largest economy means that we should see base metal prices, uh, commodity prices like oil, uh, struggle a little bit more. And sure enough, when we look at something like crude oil here, it's back in the middle of this ascending triangle after having fallen quite a bit over the last few weeks. We're now starting to see oil trade below and establish a beachhead below uh, 50. Further losses could be on deck as we consider the fact that supply issues remain. Ultimately, right now, I think selling rallies in oil is the way to go. And that's why I think dollar CAD, while it's moving back up here, it really hasn't been hit by the dollar decline in recent days. There are easier ways to express a uh, Canadian dollar bearish bias, say via the euro, which is continuing to build upon its break back above uh, this former re- uh, resistance band, if you will. Um, euro Aussie, likewise, is starting to look a little bit more favorably now that it's moved back within its triangle. Uh, and now we're starting to see that uh, ultimately here, it looks like there could be a little bit of a, a head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders pattern here forming off of the lows which is guiding price to the top side. I'll be looking for a move back into former lows that we had seen throughout 2016, particularly between March and August, which come right around 144, say 30 to 144.95. Elsewhere, something to keep an eye on, if the dollar is going to struggle, you're probably going to see it happen via yields, and that means gold will be on the move. Gold is trading back up to what would be an interesting level of resistance in that, uh, roughly speaking, 1260 area, the high that we put in right around February 27th. If price is able to continue to push through there, we have immediate resistance coming up off of the highs going back to last July, August, September. Uh, Even uh, you could argue the spike that we saw on election day in the United States. And that only carries up to about 1275, 1280 over the coming sessions. In conjunction with the DXY finding some support at former resistance that formed before the election and then the rising trend line off the lows that we go all the way back to May last year. One might think this is starting to become an interesting point where the market could either reassess what's going on with the greenback or commit to a much steeper breakdown. I'm of course concerned that after seeing an attempt to break outside of the range that has envelop price going back to the beginning of 2015. This could amount to a false breakout, and if it does, it means the dollar is due for a lot lower prices over the coming weeks and months. And again, something to consider, we do have this protectionist regime uh, in the U.S. administration right now, and we've heard the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin talk about how the dollar, a strong dollar, isn't necessarily the best thing for U.S. exporters. If that's the case, and considering how far the dollar has run, Uh, with respect to at least relative to some of these other 
major currencies like the Japanese yen or the euro or even the Chinese yuan can't help but think that we could be seeing something like uh, perhaps another Plaza Accord type deal set into motion that helps the dollar stabilize and prevents it in an excessive run up as the Fed tries to raise rates while these other economies, central banks keep policy relatively loose. So there's a lot of big ideas here that are floating around, things that would affect the dollar on a longer term basis. But today we're going to get a look at the divergence between this hard data and soft data. Again, soft data, the sentiment figures have been very, very strong, whereas the hard data has been rather weak. It's why we're seeing the divergence between U.S. Uh, Atlanta Fed GDP now and say the New York Fed uh, GDP tracker. Again, Atlanta Fed only uses the hard data. It's modeled after the BEA. The New York Fed incorporates soft data into their regression model. And while both are dynamic factor models, uh, they're both pointed to different situations where Atlanta Fed on the hard data is looking at a 1% growth rate. And the, the New York Fed model with the soft data incorporated is looking at about 3%. So seeing that divergence get resolved, looking for clues today will be important to see whether or not the dollar can actually stabilize here before it breaks another significant trend line going all the way back to May 2016. Uh, that's it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. Of course, you can always reach out to me through the Daily FX Real Time Newsfeed, Stock Twits, and Twitter at CVecchio FX. You can access that by going to the top ribbon on the website and clicking on Real Time News. You can always email me, CVecchio at dailyfx.com. If you're around tomorrow morning, we'll be hosting the weekly trading QA. That's going to start. Wednesday, 6 Eastern, 10 GMT. For those in London, that's 11 British summer time now. Otherwise, on Thursday, we'll be hosting the Central Bank Weekly Webinar. We talk about specific Fed, ECB, BUE, etc. policies and how they're impacting FX markets. Looking forward to see you soon.